before before last. Uh, let me see. Yeah, okay. So you all have, have, have seen this, the center of curvature. So you, so, so you guys will know this, okay? But if not, there's, um, I want you all to like visualize uh, differently also. So like how I taught you guys shearing force, right? We have five rules or uh, four rules that we make. So for this case, I want you all to be able to visualize what is going on. So this is very easy to visualize, okay, by plotting the stresses. Okay, so we are just going to sketch the stress. So by sketching the stress, you can visualize this better. You will, you have. I mean, I will have more confidence. Okay, if not, it's not always I can remember. Uh, center of curvature towards the center of curvature is positive. Okay, let's say if you forget, let's think about a simple way. And this technique I'm going to teach you. If you have been through high school, math, you know how to do this already. So what do I mean by that? So we're going to plot this out. Okay, so we're going to plot. We're going to sketch. You're going to sketch the stress distribution. Okay. So this is my stress. Okay. And then uh, I wonder I have enough space. I think I do whatever. So this will be my uh, minus 80, <coughs> 60, 40, 20, 20, 40, 60. Okay, so this is our stress X. Then I will have minus 2, minus 4, minus 6, 8. 10, 12, and then the top, I will have, I will have 2, 4, 6, 8, uh, 10. Oh, just nice. Wow. Okay, so the vertical axis is my Y. Right. So this is your uh, Y. So from here, we can locate the two position. So one is uh, at 8.154, at point A, 8.154, I'm just going to eyeball this. And then you roughly go and get 52.7, 8.154, 52. So at this point over here, this is where you have 52.73, and you have 8.154. Okay, so this is in uh, megapascal. This is in millimeters. So this is basically your point A. And then your point B or your, your point D, you have 11.846. So 11.846. It's up to here, 11.846, close to 12, and you have 67. So it's somewhere around here. Okay, so this is eyeballing. So this is minus sixty-seven point one seven one, and then you have eleven point eight four six. Right. So when you draw this out, you have a straight line. Hopefully, my eyeball can generate a straight line that misses the. Okay, so from here. Okay, so if you zoom close enough, you see there's a shift already, right? And it's shifting downwards, like like locating the cent, uh, the center of curvature is. So you know that there will be a shift, right? This is your shift, right? So this point, if we look at a parent function, right? If we look at a parent function. Right, we we look at y. Oy. Y is equal to mx plus y intercept. We want to find this y intercept. Yes, so so this is your y what intercept. I told you guys, high school math. Okay. And no need to like uh oh p x over a minus m z over i z z y. Okay. You don't need to do that. 
So this position, as I mentioned before, this is your centroid. The other position, the green one, this is your, uh, your, sorry. So this over here, this is your neutral axis. Right? So the centroid is just purely based on geometry. The neutral axis is based on your stress field. So you're going to find a gradient, M, is equal to change in Y, divided by change in what? X, okay? So the change in Y, I'm going to take the, I'm going to take the full length, okay? I'm going to take, so the, the, the whole distance is uh, 0 0.02 meters, right? And then the delta X is the X axis, which are the stresses, so it's equal to 67, 0.171 times 10 to the power 6 plus by the A, which is 52.729 times 10 to the power 6, right? So this will be equal to uh, 0 0.02 divided by 67.171 power 6 plus 52.729 power 6. So this will be equal to 166. Boy, eight zero six times ten to the power minus twelve. The slope is what positive slope, right? So I'll do it again. Divide by six seven point one seven one power six plus two point seven two nine power six close bracket. Okay. So now when where we have this, so our function now will be y is equal to stress x multiplied by or 16 point or 166.806 times 10 to the power minus 12 stress x plus by your y intercept. Okay, so I'm going to call this equation number two. Okay, so we're going to substitute. Okay, we're going to substitute uh, when x or when stress x is equal to positive 57 or 52.729 and then the y will be equal to 8.154 positive also times 10 to the power minus 3 into equation number 2 okay so you will have 8.154 times 10 to the power minus 3. So this will be equal to 52.729. Okay, this is equal to 52. Sorry, I should not rush. Multiply by uh, 8.154. Oh, no, no. Multiply by uh, what? Stress X. Multiply by the gradient. 166.806 times 10 to the power minus 12, and then plus by the y-intercept. Okay. So the y-intercept, which is the position of your neutral axis, will be equal to 8.154 power minus 3 minus by 52.729 power 6 times 166.806 power minus 12 is equal to minus... 0 0.6415 times 10 to power minus 3 meters, right? So down here you see a minus because this is the actual location that we've written. So this is equal to minus 0 0.6415 millimeters, okay? So the answer it's the same. I know one side is positive, but you have to know where the se uh, the center of curvature. So this is the method on the right hand side is just using what high school math. Okay, you cannot remember the left hand side. Okay, don't worry about it. Right? Any questions so far? Anyone? Cheeky sort. You failed high school math twice. I'm going to hit you soon. <laughs> 
Okay, so this this will be fine. Okay, you'll be fine. Okay, you pass Sylvie's math, you'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> right. Any other questions so far? So before I go on to the next topic, are you okay with this? Either technique you use is fine. Whichever you're comfortable, I, I'm not bothered. Okay, if you if you think there's too much to remember, then use the right hand side. If you can remember the center of curvature is positive towards it is positive, then use the left. I'm I'm fine by the one. Anyone any questions so far? Okay, no. Okay, so the next one, next topic now. We're going to look at uh, centric. Right? Unsymmetrical. Uh, bending moment. Loading. Okay. So we are going to, I'm going to draw a, what do I mean by unsymmetrical? So we know the unsymmetrical is again due to the what? Stress field. Right? Nothing to do with the force, nothing to do with the with the geometry of the beam. Okay. It is a stress field dependency. Okay. So we're gonna draw a 3D structure now. Alright. So this will be my uh our structure. Now, by the way, uh, new topic, analysis is still the same. I repeat again, new topic, analysis is still the same like what I, I, how I taught you, right? In terms of uh, bending moment, how to find second moment of area. Okay, still the same, nothing changed. That's the beauty of uh, what I'm trying to teach you. They, they, they can add all they want. Our analysis is generic. This is how good we are, okay? <laughs> Not that uh, the the loading changes. Okay, we have to change our analysis. Analysis is still the same. So this is our structure now. Okay, so let me get this sorted out. Okay, so this is our structure. Okay, bear with me. So based on the configuration that we have <coughs> at the at the tail end okay, at, at this end over here the structure is built in near yeah, the structure is built in okay then I'm going to draw a uh, transformation So this is our uh, X. So, so this is our X. So this is our X. <coughs> Excuse me. And then this will be our Y. And running horizontally, this is our Z. So we have unsymmetrical loading is when this occur, okay? When you see a structure loaded this way. So the structure <coughs> is loaded by the moment, and this moment is on the YZ plane, okay? So if you look at a YZ plane, the moment is acting on the YZ plane and it has an angle over here by what? Theta. Okay. So for this case, <coughs> excuse me. Your structure, your the moment will be broken into two components now. Okay. So you will have, uh, you have a component. And your first component over here. Right. 
So this is our moment arrow. And this is your moment about Z. And then you have the next moment. 